Hey guys, welcome back to another head-to-head -head video where we compare the new Mojo 4 from Ivis with the Ripley. And for those of you guys who follow the channel, you'll know I've uh, had an Ibis Ripley now for about a year and a half. I demo a ton of bikes and there has not been a bike out there that does what the Ibis Ripley does. I'm not sponsored by them. I paid for this bike and it's the bike I choose to ride. And I just think it's, I, I mean, if you follow the channel, you, you pretty well know that this is, uh, in my opinion, the best bike available right now. I've had it for a year and a half, got over 2000 miles on it and I just love it. So that's the bias here, right, right out the gate. So just to be clear on that, if you're new to the channel, uh, my name is Jason. I'm five foot eight, usually ride medium bikes. Both the bikes in the video today are mediums. Um, the Mojo 4 has been great. I've had it for about two weeks now. Uh, probably have eight or nine rides on it. And, uh, uh, I'll just note, if you didn't already watch the video uh, that I did on the Mojo 4, uh, you can click that link right over here and go watch the Mojo 4 video where we just talked just specifically about that video, or excuse me, about that bike. And, uh, and then if you want to watch a video just on the Ripley, um, uh, you can click that link right here as well and uh, watch the Ripley video. Um, yeah, no love lost on this bike. It's, uh, it's been incredible. I made sure that these both bikes have a very similar tire on there. So I, I normally ride this bike with a much faster rolling cross country uh, tire setup with a recon and an ardent race. I'll link um, everything I talk about today will be linked in the description below this video. So the tires that I normally ride are more cross country, the recon and the ardent race. T today I put the uh, dissector on here and the DHF just so it'd be a better match with the tires for the head to head video. Uh, so let's talk about climbing. Um, the Ripley climbs a little bit better. Um, the 29er just gets more traction. It's just faster rolling, more rollover over the roots and rocks in the trail. Um, that shouldn't surprise anyone, but the Mojo 4 climbs really, really well. Um, I don't think there's that much of a difference. It's slightly different, but uh, yes, yeah, Tyler and I, uh, who I rode with today, um, swap back and forth number of times i've been riding these bikes a lot lately um it, it's a good climber but it's not quite on par with the ripley um and if you're not familiar with these bikes just i'll just mention real quick the ripley is 120 millimeters in the rear 130 in the front on a standard ripley mine has been uh, i bumped up the fork to 140 millimeters of travel on my ripley and i have a fit four damper the mojo is 130 millimeters of travel in the rear with 140 millimeter fork with the grip two damper is definitely a smoother fork. Uh, the damper in there just feels uh, better. It's just smoother. Um, I'm going to be swapping out my fit four out of this. Uh, I'm going to head up, uh, up to salt cycles, my local bike shop and have them put in the grip two damper. That's an easy decision. So if you currently ride the Ripley, uh, I would definitely spend the money and upgrade the damper on your fork. It's, it's well worth it. Um, so the, the biggest differences between these two bikes, I would say they, they both climb really good. I mean, you know, it's worth saying that the Ripley climbs better because it does, but it really doesn't make that big of a difference because if you're considering a Mojo 4, it's probably because you want the smaller wheel size. Otherwise you would have just bought the Ripley, right? This bike just feels faster and easier to ride through any tight spaces. It's, it's undeniable how, uh, like quick that bike is in tight spaces. Uh, through any of the, the tighter uh, swooping back to left to right turns, um, it just whips right through there. You can also lean it over a little easier. There's something about it that you can just lean over easier. Um, however, I would lose traction in the corners just a little bit sooner on that bike than I would at this bike, um, given the same speed. And again, Tyler and I were swapping back and forth on the uphill and the downhill. Uh, on our ride today. Uh, we rode for two and a half hours and um, yeah, it was, it was a lot of fun. That's the other thing, uh, the word fun. That bike is more fun than any bike I've ridden in a long time. It's, um, I, again, I think it's those short chain stays and maybe the smaller wheels. It, it's been a while since I've spent a, a significant amount of time on a 27.5 wheel size bike. And it just makes me wonder if maybe I need to get one because there's just so much fun. Um, also, uh, they both have the traction, the, the light traction tune from Ibis. Uh, if you're a lighter weight rider, I'd highly recommend it. Um, I'm 140 pounds. It just smooths out the trail and makes it so you can use that shock in the way that, that you know, 
is designed to be used. Um, I'm trying to th think of what other notable things. I would say at high speed, um, at, at, at higher speed descents, that bike felt um, like it handled the, the bumps a little bit better, but uh, it, it's difficult to explain. The real chattery bumps was smoothed out. I think it is probably more about that grip to uh, damper in that fork than anything else but it does get hung up a little bit uh, rode on a couple rowdy trails and it does get hung up a little bit on those uh, chundery slower chundery sections of trail um, where the 29er just rolls right over it the other thing is um, you know when it gets time to get out of the saddle and start sprinting this bike responds just a little bit quicker I would say um, to, to out of the saddle climbing or sprinting um, just getting the bike up to speed um, one more, one more real notable thing. I talked a little bit about it on the descents about how quick that is in the corners, but the, the real big corners, you know, the, the, you know, more than 90 degree angle turns like 180 degree type switchback turn, um, coming out of that just two or three quick pedal strokes and it's right up to speed. I would say even a little quicker than this bike. Um, yeah, I mean the Mojo 4, there's definitely a, a you, you can build a case as to why you should buy that bike. Um, it's, it's probably not going to be as fast uphill uh, or any on long traverses as this bike. This is probably just a little bit more efficient. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I'm going to keep that bike for another couple rides and, and spend some more time on it because it's just so much fun. Uh, that's the other thing, jumping that bike. I'm definitely more, I'm more confident in jumping that bike than I am this bike uh, for whatever reason. I think it's maybe that's smaller wheel size. Again, I'm, I'm only five foot eight, so maybe... Maybe I'm at that height where that smaller wheel size, uh, you know, is just easier for me to ride, just more maneuverable. Um, yeah, I, I don't think I would want that bike to be my only bike, uh, just because I go do a lot of long days and I really, I just really prefer that 29er uh, for those long days of, of, of riding and I like to go race a little bit. Um, but if I was just going to worry about just jumping, having fun, uh, hitting roots and rocks along the trail and jibbing around, that could be an excellent bike. I mean, I don't know. I'd be interested to hear what you guys think in your comments. I mean, do you guys ride a 27.5 bike? Or have you, has everyone switched to 29ers? seems like most people I know ride 29ers, but they're still making 27.5 bikes um, and, and they're so much fun. Uh, I, I'm after riding this for the last two weeks, I'm, I'm considering getting a long travel 27.5 bike again. I used to only ride 27.5 long travel bikes, but um, just recently been by, riding 29ers. But yeah, I would say my confidence level was higher on that bike. Not that we were riding super difficult trails where I was nervous or I needed extra confidence, but I would say I felt like a better rider on that bike. Felt more confidence, um, maybe more in control. Uh, yeah, I, I, I think that that bike, you know, I, I might have been going slower on it possibly, but, but I think I was having more fun, more confidence, and I just felt more in control of the bike. Yeah, what do you know? <laughs> anyway, I uh, hope this review was helpful. Uh, if, if you're a guy that's taking himself real serious, you, you want to get the most out of mountain biking, go hammer the uphills, hammer the downhills, and just time yourself and just really, that's your focus, I would go with the Ripley. Um, and if your speed's really high and really chundery, I'd maybe even look at something more like the Ripmo. But uh, um, just for having fun, easy to ride, uh, put a smile on your face, that's a fun bike. Really smooth riding, easy to ride, easy to jump. Yeah, it's a, a lot of fun. Hope this video was helpful. There's links to... Uh, both these bikes in the description below this video uh, to purchase the bike, along with all the stuff that I use, the glasses, the helmet, all the stuff that I use. And uh, yeah, I just want to mention also, I, I, I've been wearing this hip pack. It's called a Lab Austere hip pack. I've been wearing this for about two years now. And uh, I don't leave home without it. I put all my essentials, tube, uh, CO2, uh, tools, whatever I need right in this center pack. There's room for some candy bars or granola bars or whatever you need out on the trail. And it holds two water bottles as well. And the nice thing about it is it rides really low off below the bottom of your back. So it's not getting your back all sweaty. It kind of rides almost like a, a construction worker's tool belt, kind of off your body. R really easy to get your bottle, put it back in while you're riding, uh, 
a lot of packs, you know, a lot of packs you can't get your bottle back in, you know, it just doesn't slide in real easy and then come out. Or it's got some stupid thing you got to hook over the top or elastics or, I don't know, it drives me crazy. But this is just take a drink and then reholster it, just lickety split back on your ride. Anyway, um, they offer 25% off to, to MTB Yum Yum subscribers. So use the, the promo code uh, Yum Yum for 25% off at checkout. There's a link below the video here to Lab Austere. Uh, just an awesome hip pack. I've, like I said, I've been using it for two years. It's held up great. I've got thousands of miles with this thing and uh, don't leave home without it. So anyway, it's a great time to be a mountain biker, guys. These are both really good bikes. I hope you enjoyed this video. I had a good time riding these bikes and making it and uh, we'll see you on the next one. Thanks, guys.